All right, I am back for another video. I have uh, already recorded this, uh, but then the recording's kind of messed up, so I'm going to be doing it again. Uh, good news is I've had some practice, and now it'll probably be better than the original video. So uh, today's sort of theme or topic is distinguishing what makes a good relief pitcher and what makes a good starting pitcher. If you are not too familiar with uh, baseball, or even if you just kind of want to have wanted to test the sort of limits of the game and how realistic it is, you may find yourself logging into a new team, taking a look at your best bullpen piece, and saying to yourself, hey, if he's such a great pitcher, why can't I just put him in the starting rotation? And the answer is most of the times you shouldn't do that, but there are cases where you can. And so we're going to distinguish uh, what makes a good reliever, how that can be different from what makes a good starting pitcher, and uh, yeah, who is cut out for each role, and why. So we're gonna hopefully learn along the way. Uh, one, a few things I'm just gonna get out of the way. Starting pitchers generally will have three or four above average pitches, sometimes even five, sometimes even six. Uh, relievers will often only have two. And the other thing that will usually separate them is the fact that uh, relievers will have low stamina and would pretty much only be able to pitch you know, three innings if they were starting pitchers anyways, which that's not starting pitcher numbers. You, you hope for a guy that can go five or six, maybe even seven if he's pitching very well. So we're going to take a look at Kenley Jansen. In my opinion, probably the best reliever in baseball right now. You can see amazing stats. He's got 80 stuff. He's got 55 movement, 60 control. He's got three plus pitches. So you're looking at this guy and you're like, well, everything about this says he could be a dominant starting pitcher. And what's really going to hold him back is that 30 stamina. With that 30 stamina, like I said, probably could only pitch, you know, three innings, and as a result, better used in the bullpen. The Dodgers are a smart organization, and uh, if Kenley Jansen was usable in the starting rotation, a pitcher as dominant as him, believe me, they would have tried it already. Clayton Kershaw, his teammate, much more built for the starting rotation. Stuff, movement, control, all great. But look at these four pitches. They just got four plus pitches. A plus pitch being on the 20 to 80 scale, 55 or higher. So fastballs above average, curveballs completely elite. Sliders above average, changeup's fantastic. 75 stamina. This guy can pitch for days. He can give you 200 innings as long as he stays healthy. Craig Kimbrell. Craig Kimbrell, great. Incredible stuff. One thing you'll see, and if you watch baseball, you already know this, but many relievers are what I would call power pitchers. They have high stuff, they strike out a lot of hitters, and sometimes they sacrifice that for mediocre movement or often mediocre control. So you can see with 40 control here, Kimbrell walks a lot of hitters, or he's going to walk more hitters than average usually, but it just doesn't matter. He's just so overpowering with that 80 stuff and that 80 fastball and that 80 knuckle curve. Uh, but once again, not the type of guy you're going to want to use as a starting pitcher, 30 stamina, and really only two pitches. Two pitches works a lot better when you're pitching you know, one inning per appearance than when you're pitching five. So he's much better suited as a closer. So actually, if you, you can actually change someone's position and see their ratings, if you didn't know that. So you can come up here and go to actions, set position, and I'm gonna set him to a starting pitcher. We're gonna see what happens. You can see that he goes from like a four, I think it was like a four and a half star to like a three star. And even those three stars are misleading. He would probably perform like a one star pitcher or one and a half star. It just doesn't work, you know? <laughs> and I hate to um, I hate to disappoint, but he, he is much better suited as someone who will be a closer or a late relief pitcher. And the last guy we're gonna look at is Jose Quintana. Once again, great stuff. Great movement, great control. This is just the sort of show. Sorry guys, I'm like burping right now. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to like not do that into the mic. Uh, if so, if you hear a weird pause, that's what that is. Uh, fastball is good. Curveball is insane. Changeup is great. Uh, 75 stamina. Everything about Jose Quintana says he would be a great starting pitcher, and he is. Um, one concept I want to put forth to you now is the idea that a starting pitcher that's good is more valuable than a good reliever. And I, I think you can kind of surmise why the truth is that a, you're, a good reliever is going to throw 
you know, 60 innings of quality baseball. A good starting pitcher can throw 180 innings of quality baseball. It's just more innings. It's just more production. And so that's why a starter would be more valuable than a reliever, even if they're sort of putting up similar numbers in terms of ERA or strikeouts or whatever. Anyways, uh, for these next few pitchers, we're going to look at more normal guys. We've looked at Quintana, Kershaw, Kimbrell, and uh, Jansen. These are all the best of the best in terms of relievers and starting pitchers, but here's a here's a normal guy that you'll see in uh, most bullpens. He's a three star. His name is Oliver Drake. He, uh, you can see that his stuff is up there. The movement and control are just very middle, middling to mediocre. Two pitches that are his go-to, and stamina is 30. Okay, this guy would just... He's he would be unbelievably bad as a starting pitcher. He can function fine as a reliever, but he'd be unbelievably bad if you tried to start him. Even though he's three stars. Okay, here's a, another three star reliever with a, just a completely different makeup. He's just a completely different pitcher, and that's Charlie Morton. And for those of you who maybe haven't been paying that close attention to baseball in real life, Charlie Hor Charlie Morton was a big hero for the Astros through the regular season. And also through the playoffs when he uh, he made some relief appearances for them. The reason he's listed as a relief pitcher, uh, at least to start the game in 2018, is because the Astros have really seven pitchers that are capable of making starts and pitching quality innings. And those pitchers are Justin Verlander, Dallas Keuchel, Lance McCullers Jr., Garrett Cole, Colin McHugh, Charlie Morton, and also Brad Peacock. It's just sort of an ecstasy of riches situation right now where... Uh, Morton and Peacock are able to come out of the pen. If someone gets hurt, they'll get slotted into the rotation, no problem. They're very capable of being quality starting pitchers. So Morton, you can see right here, stuff movement control, they're solid enough. He's got five solid pitches that he can go to. He's got 65 stamina. Even though he's listed as a relief pitcher, you could easily just like trade for him, or if you were the Astros, just slide him into the rotation if you liked him more. And he would function just fine as a starting pitcher. No problem. I can go to actions. I can set position. And I can go to starting pitcher. And, uh, yeah. I mean, he's he's three stars. He's He was a three-and-a-half win starting pitcher last year. He's he's a good player. So, But I will, I will set him back to a reliever for now. But when you see a guy like this, just know, even though he's listed as a relief pitcher, he can start. And the same goes for Brad Peacock. Once again, very similar stuff. He's got five good pitches. He's got the stamina. There's no reason why he can't be a starting pitcher. He started 21 games for the Astros last year. So I can set him to a starting pitcher. He's fine. He'll be absolutely he'll be absolutely rock solid for you. Uh, setting him back to reliever. Okie dokie. So we've looked at them. And now here's an interesting guy I want to show you. This is a guy I'm not too familiar with in real life. His name's like... Denelson Lament or LeMay or something like that. He's from the Dominican Republic, so I don't really know how you would pronounce that. Uh, but you can see through 114 innings for the Padres last year, started 21 games. And when you look at him, he's got that high stuff. He's got that mediocre movement and control. He's got a changeup, but it's only 50. It's only a 50 grade changeup. Whereas that fastball and slider is just absolutely dominant. So if you were to go and set him to a reliever, you can see that he would actually be very, very good. So this is a guy where, if he doesn't quite work out in the rotation, could have a very good career as a relief pitcher. He's got that four-star potential as a reliever, and that's fantastic. One thing you'll notice is sort of the effect that uh, setting up as a reliever versus the starting pitcher has on stuff. His stuff right now is 70, okay? Uh, but if you set him to reliever, it'll actually go up 10. And that's true for most players. The truth, and that's just sort of how out of the park baseball chooses to reflect the advantages you have of being a reliever, the advantages you have of throwing one inning versus five or six. You just get to put a little more oomph into the, your uh, fastball, and you'll probably get more strikeouts. That's just what happens. You don't have to pace yourself as much. You, you're giving pretty much maximum effort every pitch as a reliever. So we'll send him back to a starting pitcher for now. But if you see a guy like this, just know. Uh, very would be very capable in the pen if they don't work out as a starting pitcher. This guy I want to look at right now is Casey Mize. Uh, Casey Mize, so we're going to, this next section of the video, we're just going to look at uh, a few draft prospects, and we're going to talk about how they project if they were to fulfill their potentials. Casey Mize is 
probably the most exciting player in this upcoming draft. He, if he's not selected first overall, he should be, um, but they they just may not select him. Whoever I can't remember which team's picking first, but um, if they don't pick him, it'll only just to, to be cheap out and not pay a big signing bonus for him. Anyways. Uh, stuff, movement, control, project solid. He's got 55 stamina. That's perfectly acceptable for a starting pitcher. You're going to see for relievers are going to often have 20, 30, 40 stamina. Starting pitchers, 55 is good. You know, 60, 70, those guys are really the workhorses. But 55 is completely fine if you're a starting pitcher. And he's projected to have three plus pitches, one of which being a dominant fastball, the 70 grade. Everything about him says he, if as long as he fulfills this potential, he would project to be starting rotation and not the bullpen. We're look at this guy, Travis Thiele. Thiele, I don't know. Once again, don't know. I picked terrible names, but he's he's a guy who's high stuff, movement and control, not quite as nice. Two great pitches to go to, even though he has 55 stamina, so he could theoretically pitch quite a few innings. This is a guy, because of those two pitches, because of that high stuff, he just projects to be more of a relief pitcher, and that's sort of reflected. So he's listed as a relief pitcher in the draft. Uh, now there's something I want to warn you guys about real quick. Okay, I want to show you this guy, Nick Lodolo. And you look at him, and he's got all these great great stuff, great movement, great control, 55 stamina, 3-plus pitches. What's wrong? This is a little kind of quirk in out of the park baseball, and it's still there, and it keeps happening. I don't know if that reflects real life data or not, but the truth is that changeups in this game almost never develop, especially not if it's coming in at like a 30. You can see his fastball and curveball are already 50 and 40 grade, but this changeup has a long way to go to be usable at the major league level. It's it's highly unlikely that these changeups develop. It's like a 95% chance they won't. So if you're looking at this guy. You're like, wow, he is going to be a stud in the draft, but you need to hold back because you're gonna, you need to realize this changeup likely won't develop, and he's going to become, if the rest of this develops, he could honestly become like this Kenley Jansen type. He could become like an amazing reliever uh, or an Andrew Miller type, but he's n he's not going to be a solid rotation piece unless this changeup uh, is able to become major league quality and it's highly unlikely that that happens and that's just kind of a quirk in the game so I'm going to do a video about the draft at some point and that's going to be a big focus is how that changeup will, will likely not develop and here's another case where that changeup likely won't develop I'm not saying you can't draft these guys I'm saying you have to accept the fact that they're probably going to be relief pitchers and in a way just kind of automatically inferior to starting pitchers so yeah, that's all I have to say about that topic. Hopefully now we understand what makes a starter a starter, what makes a reliever a reliever. The truth is, pretty much any starter you can make into a reliever. Uh, the high stuff, wild guys are going to usually do better as relievers, but um, because starters are better, because they do give you you know 180 innings of quality pitching versus 60, because you know guys like Andrew Miller and Archie Godley in real life are field starters, but elite relievers... Um, it's it's easy it's much easier said than done for a starter to become a reliever than for a reliever to become an effective starter unless you really are this Charlie Morton or Brad Peacock situation right here. So that's all I have to say about the topic. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.